Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I want us to continue our sermon from last week, uh, which was focused on being different, the fact that Jesus has called you and I to be different. And so uh, this week's uh, sermon uh, text will be taken from John chapter 15, verse 18 to 20. And it says, if the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. The world would love you as one of its own if you belong to it, but you are no longer part of the world. I chose you to come out of the world, so it hates you. Do you remember what I told you? A slave is not greater than the master. Since they persecuted me, naturally they will persecute you. And if they had listened to me, they would listen to you. These are the words of Jesus that he shared with his disciples. And I believe that a lot of it definitely does apply to us. Over 2,000 years ago, a man named Jesus walked this earth. He came to this earth with a divine mission or a divine mandate. And the mission was to be an agent of reconciliation. An agent of reconciliation was needed because of the enmity that existed between God and man. And so when Jesus arrived on the earth, he handpicked 12 people. He called them out and asked them to follow him. Yes, all but one truly followed him, as you all know. But the ones who truly followed him He discipled and challenged them to come out of the systems of the world. Why? Because the systems of the world will seek to enslave, impede, destroy, and isolate from God. And so these people that he called out, they were were a group of people from different backgrounds. And we see others, others besides the 12 also coming to follow Jesus. And these people all came from different backgrounds showing that God in heaven will use anyone who is willing to come out of the world and walk with him. These people did not need to be the most intelligent people. They did not need to be the most skilled people. And some did not even have leadership qualities. Some were illiterate. Some had doubts. But accepting the call to come out, follow, and be different enacted a change in their hearts. It started a change in their lives. It started a revolution and brought a transformation that we see re-echoing over and over all over the world. All because they accepted the call to come out and be different. Not only that, Because of their decision to come out and be different, you and I today are seated here. Why? Because we know and we believe, and based on the testimonies and the the Thanksgiving messages we heard today, that God is good. And not only is he good, he has bridged the gap that exists between us and God. When you look at the lives of these 12 men, along with all the other men and and women who were attached to this man, Jesus. What stood out or what stands out about their lives is that they were different from the world around them. They were so different that the world did not know what to do with them. The world did not know what to make of these people because they knew their background, they knew their past, but somehow there was something happening in them and to them that made them stand out. We might even dare call them weird people. Why? Because they loved when they were hated. They blessed when they were cursed. They made peace even when they had the right to make war. They gave even when they did not have much. They were friends to the friendless, and they were the healing selves to many broken people. They loved their enemies. When all would run away from helpless people, they would run the opposite direction towards them. Yes, they were not perfect people. They had their own struggles. They had their own difficulties. But the reality is that they strive to emulate the man Jesus. These people were very counter-cultural. 
And to them, it was not an intent to define norms. They were, they were countercultural, not because they, they thought it, it was a cool thing to be countercultural or, or to go against the systems of the world or the system of their day. No, but it was the desire, the love, and the zeal that was burning in them after accepting the call of Jesus to truly come out, follow him, and be like him or be like Jesus. Friends, I want to make note of this. Your life that God has given to you on this earth is not by chance. Because you were on God's mind even before your parents met. They may not have planned you. You may have been an accident in human terms. But he knew you would walk on this earth. Even, let's, let's, just, just check this out. He knew you would walk on this earth even before the foundations of the earth and the heavens were made. That is how important you are to him. And so if you are, no matter what you're going through right now, if you feel like you're being isolated, people don't care for you, you're not worth anything, I want you to know that God of all flesh, the one who made the heavens and the earth, the one who designed the flowers, the one who designed all the cool creatures and the weird creatures that we're like, what? Even the mosquitoes <laughs> that we all love, right? And he thought of you and not only thought about you, he created you and made you the way that you are with all your quirks and everything about you. In his wisdom, he made you the way you are. Your likes and dislikes. And he has equipped you to fulfill a destiny that only you can fulfill. He has placed you on this earth for a purpose that nobody can fulfill. Only you can fulfill that purpose. We may not like mosquitoes, but they fulfill a purpose that no other insect can fulfill, which is to annoy you. Well, there are other things. <laughs> And so when you, one who is fearfully and wonderfully made, when you seek to be like everyone else, what happens is that you limit the impact that you can make because you're not called to be like everyone else. If the cat acted like a dog, us cat lovers would not be thrilled. Amen. Amen. God has not only called you out, but he's called you to stand out from everybody, even from other Christians. That's why you cannot emulate your life after other believers. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. It means the most important person that we need to look up to is Christ. And so if you're following Paul and Paul's life is not reflecting Jesus, don't follow Paul. Follow Jesus. When a man or woman encounters Jesus, he or she becomes different. His life's mission changes. And what happens is that he becomes countercultural. There's a story of a man called Father Damien. And Father Damien was a Catholic missionary from Belgium. He's renowned for his selfless service to a a leper colony on the Hawaiian island of Molokai in the late 19th century. Father Damien dedicated his life to improving the lives of the people of these, these lepers who have the Hansen disease or leprosy. These lepers were isolated by law due to the highly stigmatized illness. Sorry, I'm ter terrible at reading. Bear with me. And after years of devoting his life to and caring for the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of this colony, Father Damien contracted leprosy himself. And, and, and he discovered this only when he accidentally spilled water on his right foot. He realized he couldn't feel anything. And then he tested the left foot and couldn't feel anything. And so that Sunday, when he went to preach, he started his sermon with, we lepers. 
identifying himself with them. What pushed Father Damien, a perfectly healthy man, to devote his life to be the difference maker in the lives of these men and women who were not only cut off from the rest of the world but relegated to a life of being labeled and seen as outcast. I believe it was the love of Jesus living in this man. And because of the love of Jesus, he decided to give up his life to take on servitude for the souls of these men and women. His life was different because of Jesus. And the reality of accepting the call to come out, walk with Jesus and be different is that it will not always end up in celebration and pomp. There will be a lot of amazing days when you see the hand of the Lord on your life, blessings upon blessings, even before you pray, think your prayer is answered because God and his mercy is caring for you, is taking care of you, and knows you are faithful to his call. But there will be days when you will not experience what you think you should experience. But we know that God is still with us. Because the most important thing that you and I have to focus on is not the prize. Or let me go back and say this. Let's focus on the prize. Why? Because the prize is Jesus. He is the prize. Not what the earth has to offer us. Why? Because when we focus on what the earth has to offer us, we will not strive to be different. You look at the celebrities of our days. They claim to be the most handsome, the most beautiful, and before they even date, they look up, they, they get counselors who, who match them and come up with all these algorithms. You and this person will fit together, and guess what? In two weeks, they're divorcing. They have all the money in the world, and yet they're not satisfied. That means that you will never gain eternal satisfaction on this earth. If you run after the things of this earth, it will leave you empty. The followers of Jesus were not perfect, but they were different because they strived to follow the path that Jesus had carved for them. You and I are reminded that the destiny that God wants to carve for us must be in sync with the lives that these men and women of ancient times chose to live. I want to remind you that we're not better than that. We might be modern, we might be hip, but if they chose to stand out for Christ, and because of that dedication, they made a huge impact, and guess what? You and I are not above that. We're not too busy to stand out. We're not too busy. Why? Because we're called to stand out for Jesus at our workplaces, on our phone calls, on the highway. Lord Jesus, help me. <laughs> I can't deal with slow drivers, people who don't use their turn signals. I keep repenting every day, Lord. I see one in the fast lane driving really slow, and I go around. Oh, it's an old man. I'm going to hell. God. I'm not going to hell. I'm not saying praise God to that. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Friends, we're reminded in John 15, verse 18 to 20, uh, to 20, which we just read that we are not of this world. And because we're not of this world, we will be different from everybody around us. And because we will be different from everybody around us, it is possible that we will not be loved. And we will not be loved because our lives are contrary to the status quo. 
The status quo of all earthly kingdoms and systems, the status quo of the devil's kingdom. Why? Because God has chosen you. He has chosen you to bear good fruits. And your good fruits that you bear will bring conviction to a broken world. And unfortunately, this broken world does not want to hear the truth. Have you tried telling the truth to someone who doesn't want to hear it? Imagine two people being in love, and you know, Joe Blow is bad for this girl. What happens when you tell her? You'll be the bad person. If they used to hang out with you, they're not going to hang out with you because you're telling them the truth. The world does not want to hear the truth. We're called to bring conviction to this world. And it, it, it doesn't mean that we're better. That's not what I'm saying. But it means that we're called to challenge the order and the system of the day in love and in truth. And when you challenge the system and the order of the day, when you challenge with the truth, what happens is that people or the world will respond in two different ways. Two different ways. They will either um, embrace the truth or reject the truth. And when people reject the truth, what happens is that they start hating you. And I'll say this, if Jesus was hated for being different from the status quo, and you, am, you and I must know that we will not always be like. Our goal, our purpose as believers, as followers of Jesus, as disciples, is not to be liked. If you want to be liked by everybody, you will disappoint everybody and they will disappoint you. And you will disappoint yourself. You're not bacon. You're not pizza. <laughs> Not everyone, even, not everyone even likes bacon. I, I met someone who's like, I don't like bacon. I'm like, excuse you, who do you think you are? You don't like bacon. <laughs> Anybody who doesn't like bacon might need to have a deliverance session here. <laughs> Friends, people will not like you for many reasons. People will not like you for how much money you have. So why try to please everybody? People will not like you if you talk about Tesla from the pulpit. <laughs> Sometimes people just meet you and they're like, I just don't like you because you're too tall, you're too short. Flimsy reasons. Maybe the way you talk, the way you walk, even the color of your skin, your hairstyle. Isn't it insane the things people who don't even know you will just assume and not like about you? These are things that you and I, we really don't have control over. But when it comes to the things that we have control over, let's make sure that when people bring an accusation against us, it is not because we're up to no good, but it is because our heart is after Jesus. And because our hearts are chasing after Jesus, it brings conviction to them and causes them not to like us. I'm not talking about sh shoving your faith and you're walking people's faces. I see that a lot, and that will never transform anybody. Going to someone and telling them, you're going to hell because the Bible says so, for the most part, will not convict 99.99% of the population. Who has ever had a, any success rate with that? If you do that, please don't. Tell people about the love of Jesus. Let people see the difference that Jesus is making in your life. Because your life... And I said it last week, your life may be the only Bible that, other, uh, that, that people may, may ever get to read. And that Bible will either convict them because you're so different that it is challenging their status quo, or it will make them conclude that, you know, this Jesus doesn't make any difference in the people's lives. Everyone who accepts the call of God will have two life-altering decisions. Hold on, let me read mine. <laughs> Okay, everyone who accepts the call of God will have two life-altering decisions. The first decision is to come out of the world. When Jesus met the disciples, he said, come and follow me. And the decision to come out of the world is a response to the call of Jesus. 
And the second life-altering decision is to stay out of the world. When the Bible talks about the world, it is referring to the systems of the world. The system, the Greek word used in John 15 is cosmos, which refers to an orderly arrangement or systems. So it's not necessarily talking about separating yourself from people to experience some kind of utopia. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the way of life. Why? Because the way of life of the world, the systems of the world, their role is to suck you right back into it and prevent you from fulfilling your God design purpose on this earth. To make a difference, to make an impact in this world, you have to stand out. You have to stand out. If you call yourself a follower of Jesus, you have to stand out. Friends, there's no negotiation about that. You can't say, I, I, I'm a believer, I'm a follower of Jesus, but I want to be like everybody else. That's not how the early church lived. They were so different that they were persecuted. I'm not saying we live lives that will cause us to be persecuted. But if that is what happened for being faithful to Jesus, then that is what happens. But we're called to be different, not because we point accusing fingers at people, not because we let people know that they are wrong, not because we cannot wait to challenge people. No, but because Christ is living breathing and moving in and through us, and, be, and, and that challenges people. You cannot encounter, truly encounter Jesus. You cannot truly have the Holy Spirit living in you and remain the same. And I've said it here many times. When you encounter an oncoming truck, there will be a transformation Not many people got it. <laughs> when there's a, a train coming and you encounter it, the train will not be transformed. You will be transformed. And that's what happens when you accept the call to follow Jesus. You lay everything down for the sake of Jesus. You are not your own. He says, I am your Lord. When we stand here and we say, I accept Jesus as my, as my secondary option. Ask my Lord sometimes when I feel like it, when I'm in trouble, when I'm happy. I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Lord means he is boss of your life. Isn't it interesting how we fear our bosses at work more than Jesus? We listen to our bosses at work more than Jesus because of paychecks. Think about the one who has the power of life and death. The one who is able to transform our lives for the better in an instant. What would that look like? if our lives were radically different for him. I want to give us some practical ways that we can be different. Some practical ways that we can be different for Jesus. And number one is make sure you know what it means to be set apart for Jesus. Oh, oh, hold on. Make sure you know what it means to set apart Jesus as the Lord of your life. Make sure you know what it means to set apart Jesus as the Lord of your life and the Lord of your heart. Why? Because the heart is deceptive. And when you accept the call to follow Jesus, make sure you know what that means. If you've never taken time to think about what that means, I think it's time to do that. Because there are many, they come to Jesus, they don't realize that they have to count the cost. And so as they walk with Jesus... Life hits them in the face, and they are like, that's not what I was promised. Pastor Manny said, come to Jesus, and you will have a ball. You will have the best life ever. 
you'll have the best life ever because God will always defend you because God is with you. But it doesn't mean you will not walk through the valley of the shadow of death because guess what? He says he is with you. He will be with you through it. Number two, guard your mind. A lot of spiritual warfare happens in our minds. Sometimes we're expecting something spooky to show up. Yes, those things are real. The forces of darkness, they are very real. But a lot of spiritual warfare has to do with manipulation from the enemy. And it happens here in your mind. And so set a guard over your mind. The word of God. That's why it says, whatever is pure, whatever is right. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, it says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. The things you allow into your mind will transform who you are. If you want to be different from other Christians, make sure that you're filling your mind, your heart, with the word of God. How can a young man keep his way pure in Psalm? You say, by guarding his heart according to your word. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I will not sin against you. The word of God will challenge you to stand out. The word of God will push you to be like Jesus. Number three, be stingy with what you consume. Not talking about a vegetarian diet. I love my meat. My wife is still working on me. <laughs> when I say what you consume, it is, it is in sync with number two, guard your mind. The things that you allow into your heart. Be stingy with them. I want to bring it so close to home. What are the movies that you watch? What are even some of the music that you listen to? How long are you spending on social media? Spending 10 hours watching cute cat videos. They're cool. Iana, is that what you do? So my youth pastor and I, we, we, we are cat people. We love cats. So that's why I keep talking about cats. But be very stingy with your heart. Be stingy with your mind. Only allow into your mind and your heart things that will build you up. Things that will challenge you to be a better person for the cause of Jesus. Binge watch. I love mystery shows. I love crime shows and all those things. But watching them for 10 hours, watching them for five hours, and spending two minutes on the Word of God, ask yourself which one is going to transform you? I don't mean to bring a condemnation on anyone, no. But I want to challenge you to know that. You are better than where you're at right now. Why? Because the power of God lives in you. There's so much God has invested in you that other people need to experience. And they will not experience it. Imagine if the apostles had decided, you know what, this Jesus thing is so cool, but, uh, but yeah, we don't want to stand out. We want to be like everybody else. Where would you and I be? Where would be that impact that they made? I'm sure other people would have replaced them. And one thing I know is that I don't want anyone to replace me. I want to do what God has called me to do to the T. There's a verse in the Bible that says, let another replace him. I don't want that to be my portion. Number four, make time for God's word. God's word says where your treasure is. It's where your heart will be. What do you value the most? If you are a follower of Jesus, are you making time for his word? When you are in love with someone, you cannot wait for them to text you. 
When you want to get close to someone, you crave their attention. You want to be so near them that sometimes you even do crazy things. How many of you have read Tom Sawyer? Okay, a lot of people, so I can use this example. When Tom Sawyer saw, Tom Sawyer saw Becky, what did he do? He was doing this crazy acrobatic thing just to get Becky's attention. When you love God, when you, when you want to be different from him, for him, you will go all out. So make time for God's work. Seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit, number five. Number six, be a life giver. When I say a life giver, we must be people who forgive. We must be people who bless. The first Adam brought death into the world. But the second Adam that we're following brought life. We are seeds of the second Adam. And because we're seeds of the second Adam, we must sprout life. Wherever there's death, wherever there's brokenness, we don't spur it on. We bring a change. Number seven, stand, and that's the last one, stand for the truth. Stand for the truth. Being different means standing for the truth. Let God be true and all men liars, God's word says. Even if it means becoming an outcast, stand for the truth. And the truth is not what you think is right. The truth is what God says, God's word says is right. right. We live in a time where truth has fallen on the street. Truth is now subjective. This is your truth. This is my truth. One plus one is two. Two. It's not subjective. It's a, well, you know, maybe a hundred years ago, one plus one was two. Truth is true. I want to leave you with, this, with a video here, which is a, a letter to a man in the second century called Dionysius. And he wanted to know what a Christian was because these Christians were all over, and the, different, the difference of their lives could be seen. Their lives were so different that the people were wondering, who are these people? What is it about them? And so this man, Dionysius, asked for, uh, asked for the meaning of, uh, or he wanted to know more about who a Christian was, and this letter was written to him. This was 1,800 years ago in the second century. Let's check it out. Years ago, in the second century, a man called Dionysus, he wanted to know what a Christian was. And he asked to have it explained to him. And this was written to him to explain to him what a Christian is. The distinction between Christians and other men does not lie in country or language or customs. They follow local customs in clothing, food, and in the rest of life. And yet they exhibit the wonderfully paradoxical nature of their own citizenship. They live in their own countries, but as if they were resident aliens. They share all things as citizens and yet endure all things as if they were an underclass. Every foreign country is their homeland, and every homeland a foreign country. They marry, like everyone else, and have children, but they do not abort their young. They keep a common table, but not a common bed. They live in the world but not in a worldly way. They enjoy a full life on earth, but their citizenship is in heaven. They obey the appointed laws, but they surpass the laws in their own lifestyle. They love everyone and are universally derided. They are unknown and roundly criticized. They are put to death and gain life. They are poor, but make many rich. 
They lack all things and yet have all things in abundance. They are dishonored and are glorified in their dishonor. They are abused and they call down blessings in return. When they are beaten up, they rejoice as men who are given a new life. In short, what the soul is in the body, that the Christians are in the world. The soul lives in the body, but is not confined by the body. And the Christians live in the world, but are not confined by the world. God has appointed them to this great calling, and it would be wrong for them to decline it. Wow. All right, so you heard, uh, you watched the video. The first time I watched this video, it so convicted me. Because you think about the second century, they were only 200 years removed from Jesus. So they truly understood what it meant to be a Christian, even better than we do. So before the worship team sings, you know, just, just go on. Um, I want us to just pray one prayer and say, Lord Jesus, Help me to be more like you. Holy Spirit, come and change my heart. Make me different for God. Help me live a life that will bring glory to God. Help me trust you, Jesus, in the good and in the bad. Let my life bring many to the foot of the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's just spend two minutes just praying before the worship team just continues. Praise 
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Lord Jesus, we just want to praise you for your son, Jesus. God in heaven, we want to praise you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. Lord, we can fulfill our destinies and our purposes because of your sacrifice on the cross. Lord, may we not be more like ourselves, but may we be more like Jesus. Lord, I pray that we will love more like Jesus. We would heal the broken more like Jesus. We will be gentle like Jesus. We will speak the truth just like Jesus. We will be firm just like Jesus. Lord, my prayer, Lord, is that everyone under the sound of my voice will leave here changed for the better, Lord. Because we're going to strive to be different not because we're better than anybody, but because, Lord, we see a broken world that needs Jesus. We see a broken world that will only be transformed when we live out the transformation that your Spirit is working in our lives, Lord. Lord, help us be people who spend time in your Word, Lord. Lord, sadly, we live in in a time when biblical illiteracy is through the roof and God we have access to the Bible on our phones all around us Lord Lord help us be so radical that Lord even our children will look at us and say there's something about my mom and my dad and that is Jesus and Lord I see In the book of Judges, chapter 2, where it says a generation came after Joshua's generation that did not know the Lord. Lord, it looks like somebody dropped the ball somewhere. Lord, may we be a generation that does not drop the ball. But we live out our lives to see others changed, to see the next generation knowing Jesus. Lord, bless us and keep us. Help us be faithful to you. Transform our lives and give us intentional connections so that, Lord, we can be true witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.